Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Two Cent video for this week, for the week of May 8th to the 14th, though. Um, no video game review for this week. I might do a video um, tomorrow that will be recorded on a Saturday and have it hopefully up by Tuesday on basically one of the streaming videos that I have watched just finished watching those. So hopefully I'll try to see if I could do that or not, but there won't be any video game uh, review for um, this week or anything like that. But we do have four stories to cover, um, both of them Nintendo and Xbox related though, as apparently we're seeing Microsoft hit two bit hurdles though. One has to do with the Xbox outage that recently was hit though, and the other one has to do with the big delay that involves both Rainfall and Starfield, though. Plus, I do want to take a look at Nintendo, including the their financial report, plus their response to a recent the whole labor dispute that they've been into, and the indie show indie world showcase that they recently did. Which, well, let's just say it didn't exactly sit well with everyone um, out there, though. If you're interested in where I got the source of these information, though, links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. But before we get started, though, I like to do what, what I like to call the quick my two cents, stories that kind of caught my attention, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details, though. Uh, the first one is to report that apparently a former Nintendo manager has now joined Microsoft, the Xbox division, as part of the Forza Director of Quality, though. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what this person does, and we'll see if it brings in different, makes, you know, improve some of Microsoft releasing some of their first party games on their systems and all though. We have learned that EA has partnership with a um, mobile development team for the renewal of the Middle Earth or the Lord of the Rings franchise. So those who are hoping that this means that, oh, are they gonna bring back the Tw Twin Towers or Return of Kings of the games they did in? Unfortunately, no, it looks like it's gonna be another gotcha mobile game though. Uh, we also learned that Nintendo has reconfirmed some of their release windows uh, for of, of, of upcoming Switch games for this year, including Bayonetta 3, which is still aimed for this year to be exact. We don't have a concrete release date on that one, as far as I'm aware of, compared to with Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which we know that will be out in July, earlier than expected, though. Um, we also learned that Reggie fils thought um, Metroid Other M would be the defining moment um, for the franchise, though. The game is still considered a controversial entry for some folks out there. I played the game before when it was released on the Wii, though. I don't hate, I don't hate the title. I still think it's a good game. It's just I feel like the Metroid Prime trilogy is the far superior one than Metroid Other M. That being said, though, I'm not against the idea if they um, ported in Metroid Other M over to the Nintendo Switch. I might be in the minority of, on that one, but I still um, stand behind that though. We also learned that FIFA's president made a comment about after splitting with EA in regards of the FIFA license and FIFA brand, they are still think that they could put out the best FIFA game out there without EA. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen and time will ultimately tell if that is the case though. We also learned that Capcom is planning to release multiple major titles by um, March 31st, 2023, though. Um, we know some of those titles will probably come to, some of them may or may not come to the Nintendo Switch. We know for certain they'll come to, like, you know, the PS5 or the Xbox Series S, X and S and all. So we'll have to see what titles they are working on. I know there are a couple that they are working on, like Street Fighter VI. We know that is in development. What we don't know about that game is whether or not that one is going to be exclusive to the PlayStation system like Street Fighter V was, or that's going to be a, whether or not that will be a multi-platform title and we'll see that appear on multiple systems. So we'll just have to wait and see about that. You also learn that Nintendo is trying to avoid the mistake they made with the Wii U. And this is a comment from the president of Nintendo, I think Fuakawa, I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly, who basically made a statement they're trying to figure out how to get those folks who have invested heavily into the Nintendo Switch and try to migrate them over to whatever their next system will be. I think it will still be the Switch concept. I think Nintendo will stick with that concept for a while though. Though, So it sounds like they're trying to avoid that kind of mistake they made with the Wii U, which 
Some of the mistakes they made with that was when they only showed off the tablet, it came off as just basically an add-on for the Wii, not really this new console. And Nintendo had a hard time trying to promote um, the Wii U for a lot, though. So we'll see if they've learned their lessons on it, though. We know they're riding high right now with the Nintendo Switch, but time will tell how that all um plays out though. We also learned that EA is working on several unannounced remake games for 2023 though. Um, It's unclear if any of those games will make it to the Nintendo Switch or not though, so we'll have to wait and see though. Um, We know that they are remaking the original Dead Space, that's for certain, but what we don't know if there's going to be other remakes. Maybe, um, Maybe they'll do a remake of maybe Um, one of the Dragon Age games or anything like that. So time will ultimately tell and we'll have to see what comes from EA though. I'm keeping my expectations in check because this is EA we're talking about, but we'll see though. Um, We also learned that basically uh, Sony CFO has made a comment in regards of launching first party games or day one releases on Game Pass. They believe that it would basically cause exclusives to deteriorate. They don't think that is a valuable option. And that may or may not be true. That depends on your point of view, though. On the other hand, we have seen game day one games like Psychonauts 2 um, recently. You know, that got released day one on Game Pass. And that apparently, according to Double Fine, that did very well for them. So maybe Sony's right, though. Maybe they're wrong on this, though. So we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But if Game Pass continues to do very well and continues to bring in more subscribers and they start putting more first party games on it though, don't be surprised if we see a situation where Sony decides to reverse course and decide maybe we need to bring our first party games or day one release onto our subscription service. So we'll wait and see. Maybe Sony's right. Maybe they could be wrong on this though. We also learned that Bandai Namco has reported a need to 50% 50% rise in profits for, you know, fiscal year for 2022. Um, they they were certainly on a roll um, last year. Two of their big titles that I enjoyed was Scarlet Nexus and Tales of Arise. Those were certainly um, big, though. So, obviously, they're certainly doing very well. And the recent release of Elden Rings for from Soft, which has continued, continued to do very well, despite being a Souls game, which can be a hit or miss to some folks out there. It hasn't stopped that game from selling um, very well um, indeed. So obviously Bandai Namco is certainly, like with Capcom, they're certainly riding high high at this time. And last but not least, um, we did see um, two new trailers just um, came out this week though. The first one is the um, Miss Marvel trailer that recently is going to premiere on Disney Plus though. I'm very curious to see how that one um, all plays out and we finally got to see the trailer for the next avatar movie called avatar way of water to be exact i mean it was been, it's been a while since the original avatar was released back in theaters in 2009 and they sort of promote that whole 3d and all that stuff uh, that kind of has faded out at least from what what i'm seeing to be exact i'm very curious to see how this sequel is going to come out though we know that there's supposedly going to be two more avatars three and four and supposedly they might shoot back to back so we'll see how this one goes we know that this one will be out in december so i'm definitely keeping my eyes out for avatar um, the way of the water <clears throat> Okay, with the quick my true scent part now done, we'll get started with our first story. And this one has to do with the Xbox, particularly the Series S and X, and especially the recent outage that uh, Microsoft have just recently faced, though. Now, since the launch of both the Series X, S and X has been very successful for Microsoft, particularly with the Series S, though, considering at the time that we are currently facing with the chip shortage, as some systems are extremely hard to find particularly with the ps5 or the xbox series x though although lately we've have been seeing we've been hearing and it's been seeing more xbox series x start popping up in the market more than it was before and we've also been hearing that it's possible we could could be easier to find a ps5 this year whether that's true or not that remains to be seen though well, recently, a recent outage just happened with basically from Microsoft that had sort of prevented um, basically 
a lot of players playing their games, even if they are on, even if they are single player games though. And this has sort of raised the whole issues with digital games, particularly with the whole DRM type of a story though. Um, in, an art, in several articles, including um, from GameSpot, um, let me get that over here. Uh, there we go. Um, it reads that quote, and this was from May 9th, over the weekend, the Xbox network struggled with some service issues and made some digital games completely unplayable, even offline, and people spoke, spoke up to voice their frustration. Messages posted on the Xbox support account on Twitter suggest the outage began on May 6th when users began reporting that they were unable to launch games on Xbox consoles and VI the cloud. Servers resumed normally and then had issue again. The Xbox... Xbox Support account said, all issues were seemingly resolved as of May 8th, but the outage left fans with questions and concerns about Microsoft's policy and the need to connect to the internet to play non-live games, though. Um, cloud gaming, of course, um, only works when the network servers are up and running, but many people weighed in on social media to say download games, the only type that are possible on a disc-free um, Xbox Series S should be played offline without the need to check into the network. Paris um, Paris Lilly, who has worked for Xbox in the past, says he hopes says he hopes um, if I'm saying the name correctly, hopes Microsoft can be more transparent in the future about its digital rights management (DRM) policies and offers a new solution to avoid these type of headaches for players in the future. Um, Windows Central reporter Jez Corden said on Twitter that some publishers ask for online check-ins even for all offline games as form of DRM. So Microsoft um, thanks fans for their patience during the outreach. As usual, too, as usual too, the outage did not affect everyone, but this was a notable event that Microsoft worked through the weekend to fix. Um, Xbox said in a substantial tweet that it has now seen significant improvement for these issues and full margarine, margarine it, possibly I'm not saying it correctly, um, of the problem will come with the launch of a new update um, this week. Meanwhile, over at Pure Xbox, there's a report coming out that apparently one person is having problems with their Xbox Series S, um, X Series X owner panic as the console had ran out of memory. According to the article, which was published on the published on Monday, it reads that quote, "Ever seen this error message pop up before?" Over the weekend, a Reddit user by the name of Fen7, if I'm saying the name correctly, took to the platform to show off this unique problem on their Xbox Series X, where the console has suddenly run out of memory. The error message reads like something you see on a Windows PC rather than a console, stating that you need to make sure your video card has the minimum required memories, which obviously isn't neg neglectable on Xbox Series X, though. As, as it pointed out, that's, it said, the message reads, error, out of video memory, trying to allocate a rendering series, make sure your video card has the minimum required memory by lowering the resolution and or closing other applications that are running, exiting them. And the article continues saying, as you can see, the game in question was recently released, released space combat title, um, Kraus, C-H-O-R-U-S, but we've also seen this message pop up with various other games in the past, such as Control, The Ascent, and even Fortnite. In fact, the issue goes back to the Xbox One era, so it's nothing new, but we just don't see it all that often. So what is going on here, though? Um, it's hard to say for sure, but it looks like some kind of bug with the latest build for Kraus, um, C-H-O-R-U-S, and, and those other games in the past have caused it to try to allocate more memory than it was available. It's been suggested that cleaning the cache and or restarting the console can sometimes help in certain situations. It's a weird one without a doubt, but don't panic if you don't get it. You're not alone. Now, I do want to say, as far as this random panic thing, with my Series S, though, I haven't ran into this issue or anything like that. I mean, I understand the system has quick resume, but I hardly even use it, though. Every time I'm done with a game, I usually just, when I exit out, I turn that game off right away, to be exact, though. So, I haven't ran into this issue. I'm not saying there are those who haven't, though, but I have not really ran into that kind of issue as always, at least as far as I'm aware of, um, to be exact though. As far as this whole outage that happened though, 
it is a little bit of a big concern and it does raise the whole questions about raise the whole issue about digital purchases to be exact while i certainly think digital distribution is slowly becoming the new norm there is a concern about these kind of outages though especially since you need a all like an internet connection and i do think it's kind of ridiculous especially for games that are offline or have an offline mode i think it's ridiculous that they still have a drm and that publishers are still pushing for that feature which seems a bit unnecessary especially if you're playing an offline game or a single player game um to be exact though and it does raise one of the big criticisms about cloud gaming in general when you have these kind of issues and outage meaning you can't play these type of games um to be exact though so I do hope Microsoft has resolved this issue, but I do think it certainly isn't a good thing and it does highlight the problems with um, DRM on, and having to always have an internet connection um, online though. We saw the backlash back during when the Xbox One happened though. We're not, it hasn't reached the level as it is right now, but it certainly does raise the whole DRM and always online question. I do hope this gets um, resolved. Hopefully this is resolved sooner rather than later. Glad that Microsoft addressed the problem, but it does, like I said, raise a lot of questions. So overall though, um, not a great thing for the Xbox, especially for those who were playing it over the weekend. I wasn't impacted on it. In fact, I didn't turn my Xbox on during my Xbox Series S on during the weekend. I was with the Switch or the PS5, but yeah, it does bring up a whole lot of issues in regards to DRM and digital purchase is it no <clears throat> okay uh, we're going to take a quick break when we get back we'll get to part two and this one has to do with um nintendo releasing their financial report plus nintendo of america doug bowser responds to the whole um working conditions involving work involving working contractors and all so we'll take a quick break and we will be right back Okay, and we are back with part two of my My True Cent video. And for this one, we're gonna be taking a look at Nintendo's financial report, plus basically Nintendo of America, Doug Bowser, responding to working conditions, especially particularly with contractors in regards to basically the whole issue they're facing with the labor boards to be exact though. So Nintendo finally released their uh, financial report for this week. And it seems as though that despite Excuse me. Despite everything going on in the in the world in terms of the chip shortage, though, it doesn't seem to be that the switch is slowing down um, anytime soon. They did, however, did say that they are, do expect to see a drop and dip in their forecast for their fiscal year, but it doesn't seem to. Um, it's not doesn't seem to be a huge impact that some people may like to point out. So according to Nintendo, at least from their um, sales data report, it seems as though that the Nintendo Switch, um, oops, I'm getting it. In terms of the system, though, it has now, as of March 31st, 2022, has sold over, in terms of hardware, 107.65 million units, and it's been reported that they have recently overtook the PS. I believe, I think it was the PS2. It might be the PS4, but I'm not 100% sure though on that. In terms of software, they have now sold over 822.18 million units. Obviously, the Switch is continuing to do very well, which is certainly great for Nintendo and all. But at the same time, it does raise the question of, is this the time for Nintendo to announce a successor for the Nintendo Switch or a Switch 2 or anything like that? Um, do they want to kill off the golden goose that it continues to produce golden eggs? Um, and would this be the right time because of the whole chip shortage situation that we are facing though. So um, it certainly asks a lot of questions, but there's no doubt the Switch has been extremely successful um, for Nintendo. In terms of the top selling game so far, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at um, 45.33 million um, units, Animal Crossing New Horizon at 38.64 million units, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 28.17 million units though, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at 26.55 million units though, very impressive. I'm curious to see how it will be, how the sequel to Breath of the Wild, how much that will do though. 
Pokemon Sword and Shield combined together at 24.27 million units though. Super Mario Odyssey at um, 23.50 million units though. Super Mario Party at 17.78 million. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pokemon Shining Pearl at um, 14.65 million units sold. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee at 14.53 million units. And Ring Fit Adventure at 14.09 um, million units sold. So these are like the top 10 first party games. As far as another title particularly, Metroid Dread, and many have been wondering how well that game sold. According to Nintendo's um, fiscal report though, they are saying that the game has now sold 2.9 million units, according to the Nintendo report via Nintendo Life, um, putting it approximately 60,000 copies ahead of 2002 uh, Metroid Prime, as per estimate gathered by Nintendo's own data. It was previously known that Dread was the best-selling entry in the UK, but this new report figures puts it at the top of the list worldwide. Sales of Metroid Dread has re has, re has reached approximately 270,000 in Japan to date, with the remaining 2.63 sales coming from overseas. Another clear indication of the Western appetite for Samus Adventure is larger than that of Nintendo's domestic market. So it seems as though that the game certainly did very well. It's not the 3 million unit, but obviously Nintendo is certainly happy for it. I'm glad I'm, ha I'm happy for it. I'm glad the game is doing very well, though. Um, I think it's nice to see other series outside of Pokemon and Mario and Zelda get, get their time in the sun, though. Hopefully this opens the door to more entries in the Metroid series. Being that Dread is supposedly the conclusion of what started in the original Metroid, I'm curious to see where they go from there, though. Obviously, we're still waiting for um, Metroid Prime 4. That had to be restarted, though, and we know Retro Studios handling that. There have been rumors about a Metroid Prime remake or a remaster in the pipeline, although I've heard stories about how Metroid Prime Trilogy was done and just waiting for Nintendo to bring it over. So. We'll have to wait and see on that one, but I'm happy to see that Metroid Dread is doing um, very well. Another title they mentioned, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, has basically sold over 2 million copies in just two weeks. According to, um, according to what Nintendo is saying, this is from Nintendo Life, Nintendo has confirmed that Kirby's latest adventure sold over 2.1 million units in just two weeks and has sold 2.65 million new copies to date. This was revealed as part of the company's latest financial reports. Kirby's other Switch outing, Kirby Star Allies, sold 2.56 million copies by March 2019, a whole year after the game came out. The 2018 side scroller currently sits at over 3.42 um, million sales, so it seemed like Kirby's apocalyptic adventure is going to overtake its predecessor. So, um, so and it's interesting that Kirby isn't a big big seller for Nintendo, but they are pretty happy with it. So. Great that Kirby's in Forgotten Land is doing very well, though. Um, I enjoy the game, though. Might be easy for some folks out there, but it still is enjoyable, um, nevertheless. Never, never, nevertheless, though. And finally, last but not least, we definitely got a response from Nintendo of America's President Doug Bowser over recent allegations that basically they are facing in regards of certainly working conditions, anti-union to how some of the contractors are being treated though. Um, another article from Nintendo Life um, reads that, quote, in an update from Axum Gaming's author um, has shared part of an eternal message set out by Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser to employees about stories appealing in some medias regarding the alleged working conditions at Nintendo. Bowser said that he, he and the ex executive leadership team found many other points troubling and were reviewing the content. He related how Nintendo has a zero tolerance policy for inappropriate conduct, including harassment, discrimination, or intimidation. A current contractor in the production testing told at, at Nintendo told Axiom they found Bowser's message disappointing and it appeared didn't reference the contract issue core to so many accounts. Other Nintendo America contractors also shared their stories with Axiom. Axum, one former contractor known as Ash, who worked in the customer service center, spoke about their struggle to take time off from work um, during difficult periods in their life. Um, they basically 
Um, Nintendo shared a, an official PR statement with Go Nintendo in April, responding to the workers' right complaint, though. Um, according to the statement they released, they said, quote, We are aware of the claims which was filled, filed by the National Labor Relationship Board by the contractors who were previously terminated for disclosure of confidential information and for no other reason. Nintendo is not aware of any attempt to unionize or related activities intended to and intends to cooperate with the investigation conducted by the NLRB. Nintendo is fully committed to providing a welcome and supportive work environment for all of our employees and contractors. We take matters of employment of employment very seriously, though. Now, on one hand, it's very encouraging that Nintendo of America Doug Bowser is responding to this, though. However, at the same time, there is the old saying, actions speak louder than words. So, he may be saying this stuff, though, but that won't mean much until we see an actual major overhaul, though. And if, if some of the contractors are saying that they are disappointed by what the CEOs are saying, though, then it, to me, sounds like they have a lot of work to do to try to handle this, though. Um, this is a very serious issue that Nintendo um, does need to address, though. Um, like I said before, it breaks my heart to hear this is going on at Nintendo, but they should not be excused of anything. And if it turns out to be that they did something wrong, then they need to face the consequences for their actions. No if, ands, maybes, or buts, though. So um, hopefully this gets resolved. Hopefully this is handled in a more positive way, though. But yeah. You could send out a PR statement all you want to, but that ain't going to mean much if you don't take actions and actually do something to fix the problem there. We've been seeing that with Activision Blizzard lately, and we've seen, in my view at least, little, very little results though. So overall, despite, um, despite a dip in their fiscal year, Switch continues to do very well. That's certainly great for them though. Um, it's nice to see that Kirby and the Forgotten Land and Metroid Dread do Excellent, do very well, at least according to Nintendo. Hopefully this opens the door to see more entries of those games in the series, though. And while it is encouraging to hear Nintendo of America's present response to this, as I said before, actions speak louder than words, though. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part three. And this one has to do with um, the Indie World Showcase that Nintendo recently showed. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my My True Sense, I mean, I mean part three of my My True Sense video review. Sorry about that, though. And for this one, we're going to take a look at the Indie World Showcase, um, the latest Nintendo Direct that Nintendo pointed at. That had, though, um, it happened this week, and it was about um, 20 minutes long, though. And while, and while there were certainly interesting games out there, the response from a lot of folks that were kind of Eh, mixed at best. Not everyone was thrilled about it, though. But I will say that I kind of agree to some extent, but there were certainly some interesting games that were um, announced. Uh, according to several sites that showed what they, that pointed out what was shown during May 22nd, May's um, 2022 Indie Direct, they had um, Obit, which is sort of developed by Gumberland. Um, it's it's basically a game that was released in early access on the Xbox One and PC back in 2020. It's making its way to the Switch, potentially in 1.0 form. It's basically a farming life simulation game where you grow char these characters, these Obit characters and all that stuff. I mean, it looks interesting indeed, but I, I might consider taking a look at it. I'm not really sure. Um, the other one is... Batora, B-A-T-O-R-A, -A, apologize I'm not saying it incorrectly, um, Lost Haven, which is set to be released this fall on the Switch and PC. It's described by developer Stormmind Game as a deep story-driven game. It features a lot of platforming and combat that blends your physical and mental powers. In fact, you can sacrifice one in combat to benefit and straighten the other, which represents a push and pull between yourself and your conscious throughout the um, the game story though um that one looks kind of interesting though and that's one i probably might want to take a look at though it'll be interesting to see how many of these games do get a physical cop physical release vi whether it's limited run games or any other um folks out there though they also showed um electrohead which is developed by um one person though <laughs> to be exact 
begins a life as a proof of concept game developed to fit in the fit in the theme of flow in a school competition though um, basically this game is basically sort of like a mixture of a 2d platform with bits of puzzle elements that involves the use of electricity though you move your character um, basically their body or their head to solve certain puzzles and get past certain obstacles to be exact though um, it looked really neat though I'm very impressed that this was developed by one person though so it's definitely one I'll keep an eye out for the other one another one they announced was um, Soundfall though um, set to be um, Released this spring, though, it is a rhythm-based shooter action game with musical gameplay described as a dungeon crawler. You control a girl who is the guardian of harmony, tasked with saving the world of Symphonia. Apologize, I'm not saying the name correctly, though. You could do it alone or in four-player co-op, regardless of whether you go solo or have a friend tag along. You'll be you'll be using physical attacks and guns to shoot to take down enemies in the beat of a great sound pop soundtrack filled with boss dynamic levels and um and more than 140 tracks in the game though and an art style it's set to release on um this spring though on switch but also on playstation and xbox consoles and pcs um as well though um wild forest supposed according to them is a tactic roguelike deck builder um basically it's basically an rpg but you use like deck cards to basically do attacks and all it reminds me. It reminds me of that one. I think that it sort of, sort of reminds me a little bit of that one done by basically Square Enix and the developer of, you know, the Near series. I think it was called House of Cards. If I'm sorry if I'm not getting that name um, correctly though. So this one I might consider keeping an eye out for. Um, totally accurate battle simulator though um, is a very ragdoll life um, fighter de fighters developed by Land Landfall Games. Um, and it looks like to fill with plenty of laughs, introduction, and combat. You could play as a samurai, knight, fencer, and more in battles that feature more than 100 wobbing fighters on each team, though. Um, I will say the physics on that game look very um, interesting, um, to be exact. Um, Gunbrella, though, um, basically from Devolver Digital, and Ghetto Ro Robo developer Doinksoft is a nor punk action adventure game with a lot of side scrolling combat and platform and some fun Travis mechanics too. The shooting looks re resemblance of Spanunk, if I'm saying the name correctly, but more advanced because you can use the title Gunbrella to dive, swing, dash, and dive. Plus, you can savage this deteriorating world to find parts that you can use to upgrade your umbrella. This game is aimed for next year, for 2023, though. Um, there's another one called We Are OFK. Um, it's base. It's basically an indie pop. The indie pop band ONK is ready to tell the story of how the Los Angeles-based band rose to the top, or at least attempt to. to Developed by Team OFK, though. We Are OFK is described as a musical by biopic told episodically with new episodes released each um, single week until the story is over. All five episodes of We Are OK will be released weekly, accomplished by the release of new OFK signals, singles with each new um, episodes and all. I mean, this one is more like narrative driven and all. Um, art style looks nice, but it doesn't seem to sit with me to be exact though. Sit is basically a remote... Uh, takes place in a strange oceanish world that's doing a black and white style and filled with puzzles glare. You unravel a long forgotten mystery as you explore this, a surreal underwater realm with strange mechanics, ancient ruins, and dangerous uh, oceans um, inhabited. So this one hits in June. This one looks kind of nice though. Um, Mini Motorway, which is a, a puzzle game. Um, because your task is bringing these motorways to life, starting with small towns and eventually growing to metropolis. As a result, you have to revise these maps inspired by real life cities and upgrade them with highways and more. Daily, week, weekly challenges um, return to. This one comes out, um, this one's out already though, so that's interesting. Wayward Strain is developed by Ghost Pattern. Takes place in a flowing hospital airship in the 1970s rural um, um, America, rural Australia though judging by the looks of it it kind of reminds me a little bit of those point and click type of a game so that might appeal to some folks it may appeal to some it may not appeal to others though Cult of the Land um, Massive Monsters Cult of the Land continues to look great mailing together roguelike action gameplay that looks to feel a lot like Hades with an Animal Crossing style uh, base building mechanics um, 
you can um, they basically said a release date was not revealed but it'll be coming out um, this year though another crab treasure though um, basically it's sort of like um, they're saying quote if if you've been playing Elder Rings lately and have thought, I wish I was a crab, then another crab treasure might be for you. That's because Argo Crab, the team behind Going Under, describes another crab treasure as a Souls-like, well, actually a Shells-like to be exact. As you expect, it looks in place like Dark Souls that's underwater. You play as a crab using things like cans and shells and straightening your own shell all while finding other, you know, like other sea creatures though. It hits Switch um, 2023. A Souls-like game starring crabs. That's weird, but it's sort of interesting to be exact. Um, they also showed off um, other just quick stuff, such as um, One Shot War Machine Edition, Gibbets Beyond the Tree, Idol Masters, Card Shark, which supposedly has a demo out right now, Curse of the Gold, um, a guidebook to Babel, and Opius, um, O-P-U-S, Echoes of the Star Song, um, Full Bloom Edition. Um, as far as this direct goes, I would say the only games that kind of stood out to me from a, for me were The Lost Haven, Electrohead, Soundfall, um, Gunbrella. I think that's probably the best one that they showed off. Um, Sit, Sit, that might have been okay. And Cult of the Lamb and Another Crab's Treasure. Otherwise, I have to say... I, this one wasn't really that great. There were some nice announcements, but it, clearly it didn't hit with everyone, especially for those who are waiting to hear Hollow Knight Silk Song or anything like that. But obviously that did not happen in any way. So I would say my, my thoughts on this was it was mixed at best. There were some neat announcements, but really nothing that I felt kind of blew me out of the water or anything like that. So overall... I would say this was a okay Indie World Showcase. It wasn't terrible, but not every game, there weren't, not every game was exactly, not everyone was hoping for that big some, something, especially for these kind of Indie Directs, especially if you were one way for Hollow Knight Silk Song or anything like that. So like anything, these Directs can be a hit and miss. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part four. And this one has to do with Bethesda and the unfortunate announcement of a delay for both Starfield and Redfall. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, this has to do with um, Bethesda, particularly, especially with the big announcement about the big delay, though. Now, one of the games that was supposed to be coming out this year that has certainly has garnished a lot of hype, but has some concerns, has been the game Starfield. This was announced um, several years ago before Microsoft decided to purchase Bethesda and all that stuff. And up to this point, we really haven't really seen any gameplay or anything like that. We've seen maybe like a CGI trailer and trailers that show off um, a proof of concept or sort of some of the ideas behind it though. And while the idea of Skyrim in space is certainly a very interesting idea th though, and one that I am very curious to see how this game plays out though, we really haven't seen any actual um, gameplay at all. And that kind of makes me a little worried to some degree when we don't start seeing some actual um, gameplay. Now, that's not to say that I want the game to fail or anything like that. I do think it does have I do think it does very does sound very promising and everything like that. And there's no indication that this game is going to be like what we saw with Alien Colonial Marines or Cyberpunk 2077, to be exact. That being said, though, I it, it, that being said, though, the, given Bethesda's history with some of their situations, such as not paying Obsidian an extra bonus because Fallout New Vegas did not score high enough on Metacritic, to how 
Fallout 76 was handled when that game launched, I can see why some people are kind of concerned about this title. Well, recently we learned that basically the game, along with another game from Bethesda VI, Arcane Austin, Redfall, it seems that those titles will not be coming out um, this year as originally had, that we thought to and will be pushed back to the early um, 2023. In several articles, but this one from Pure Xbox, it reads, um, quote, um, Bethesda has announced today that both Starfield, oh, let me put this over, and Starfield and, and Redfall have been delayed from 2022 to the first half of 2023. In a statement, the studio explained they need more time to realize their incredible um, ambitions. They said, um, quote, we can't wait for you to play Starfield, but we need some more time. We're so thankful for all the support and encouragement and are excited to show you the game soon. Here at Arcane Austin, um, we decided to delay the launch of Redfield, Redfall. The team needed more time to bring the game to life. Thank you for, so much for your continued support. Redfall is our most ambitious game yet, and we can't wait to show it off. Um, this is a similar... Um, uh, this is sort of similar to his response he made on a tweet, though, from Bethesda, which gave us an update, said, quote, We decided to, we made the decision to delay the launch of Redfall and Starfield to the first half of 2023. Um, the team at Austin Arcane's Redfall and Bethesda Game Studio Starfield had incredible admissions for their game, and we want to ensure that you receive the best, most polished version from them. We want to thank everyone for their excitement for Redfall and Starfield. That energy is a huge part of what inspires us all every day and dives our own excitement for what we are creating. We can't wait to share our first deep dive into the gameplay for both Redfield and Redfall and Starfield soon. Thank you for your support, though. Meanwhile, according to a report from um, Jason Schreider, though, it seems as though the folks who were developing Starfield were, were extremely worried about this possibly turning into the next Cyberpunk 2077. We all saw what happened when that game launched in 2020 and the amount of backlash um, CD Projekt Red got, which was so bad it got to the point that Sony had to pull the game off of their digital storefront and CD Projekt Red had to offer refunds though. And basically spent the mo spent the year rather than doing all these updates, doing these extra content that they wanted to do, spent the idea of doing hot fixes and patch notes. And that really damaged their reputation. And they're really gonna have to knock it out of the park with their next Witcher game, which for what we understand, they're do using Unreal Engine 5 to develop that game. Well, anyway, in the article from Pure Xbox, it reads that, quote, um, a tweet from Bloomberg's Jason Schreier only serves to highlight what could have happened without a delay, though. Shiner, Jason Schreier dropped this, dropped this little accident, if I'm saying the name correctly, on Twitter just after Bethesda announced a delay of Starfield. Developers working on the game were reportedly worried that the 2022 release date could have led to a rough launch or even the next Cyberpunk, of course referring to Cyberpunk 2077. Um, according to what um, Jason Schreider tweeted, he said, this is what he tweet, tweeted, quote, Last spring before E3, I spoke with some folks on Starfield who were extremely worried about committing to the November 11th, 2022 date based on the progress they made so far. Next Cyberpunk was the term floated. Good on Bethesda for delaying even after announcing that um, specific date, though. Now, my response to this is kind of mixed in a certain degree, though. On one hand, I do think that if they knew that the game was not ready to be, know that it's not going to be ready by this November, to be exact, and they have to delay it a little bit more to polish it out, that's fine, though. I mean, that is understandable. Obviously, Cyberpunk 2077 has had some impact on some areas of the industry because of the way that game was launched, though. And it's clear that Bethesda, along with Microsoft, do not want to find themselves in that kind of situation. So I understand the reason why they want to delay the game. I think that's not necessarily a bad thing and all that. So... I don't see the delay as I don't see it as bad as some people make it out to be. That said, though, 
it does raise some question about management over at Microsoft that we have heard about in terms of how things are being handled. And given the fact that this was supposed to be their big title for the fall though, it does raise question of what Microsoft is going to have to offer for the fall. We know that, that next month will be their Bethesda uh, Microsoft Showcase um, that, that they're doing though, but with Starfield not being there, I do wonder what they're going to do to make up for that though. I mean, it's kind of a similar situation we've seen with Nintendo right now as supposedly the sequel to Breath of the Wild was not going was originally supposed to come out in 2022 but decided to push it into next year though so it, although on the other hand it does sound like Nintendo have a lot more stuff lined up for 2022 so maybe not on the same situation Microsoft is in but either way it does highlight does seem to highlight in terms of management how things are being done there I mean look what we're seeing with Halo Infinite which while it doesn't seem to be the gameplay seems to be the issue, it seems to be on the multiplayer side where it turns out they are having a hard time trying to get a lot of these content out and to the fact that they had to delay the game for a year that was originally supposed to come out on the well, during the launch of the Xbox Series S and X. So it does raise a whole lot of question of what is going on at Microsoft. And so we're just going to have to wait and see how this all plays out. I'm hopeful they'll have a good showing on with their showcase next month though. Hopefully we'll see some cool announcements and maybe we'll see something that will make up for Starfield for the fall of 2022. But yeah, this kind of puts Microsoft in a very tough spot um, at this time. So overall though, it is disappointing to see what this delay and all that stuff, but sometimes delaying a game isn't always necessarily a bad thing. It could give the developers time to basically polish and iron certain things out, and I can understand why they want to avoid the situation they saw with Cyberpunk 2077. But at the same time, this raises a whole question about the management at Microsoft and how they are handling some of the stuff there. And it does raise question of what they're gonna make up for not having that big game starfield um for the fall especially for it's just, especially since they're trying to push for game pass and everything like that <clears throat> okay um this concludes this my two cent video for this week and again these are my opinion what are yours what are your thoughts about this outage that happened for the Xbox over the weekend? So were you impacted by this? Were you not impacted by this? Do you think this brings up the whole issue about DRMs and digital purchases? What do you think about Nintendo's financial report? Do you think this, these, this is good? Do you think this is a time to release um, basically a Switch successor or you don't think we're there yet though? What are your thoughts about the Indie Showcase? Did you like the Indie Showcase? Did you not like it? Were there any games that stuck out for you? And what are your thoughts about delaying Starfield and Redfall? Do you think this was the right decision to do? Do you think this was the wrong decision? Do you think this brings up the issue about management at, at Microsoft? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal, me, or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully, that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a good day then. Bye!